With Dawn Trail now released, and the first tier of the Arcadian Savage just over a week away as I'm recording this, I actually wanted to take a look at an aspect of raids that I feel often gets overlooked. Like with any type of content, raiding is something that the dev team obviously should want players to get into, and so naturally, they should be trying to make as strong of a first impression as possible. The question then is, how do you actually do that? What goes into making a fight that has players coming back for more afterwards? And so today, I want to go over what I believe an introduction to raiding should look like, and through that journey, we'll determine what the five best introductory bosses in Final Fantasy XIV raids are. And just so we're clear on this, when I say introductory bosses, what I'm talking about are fights like Proto Carbuncle, Caduceus, Cloud of Darkness, basically the first fight within any given raid tier, and specifically on Savage or Equivalent difficulty. Before we jump into the list proper though, I want to start this off with an honorable mention. alt Reut is a boss that I honestly have some issues with, but when I look at it objectively, it belongs in this discussion. What this fight brings to the conversation is teaching players about basic concepts that they'll see in Savage Raids, preparing them for the content they'll be tackling in the future. And more than any other Savage fight, it's extremely approachable. It's widely regarded as the easiest Savage boss in the entire game, which is actually where my problems with it stem from. Personally, I think it's too easy, to the point where it's not engaging, especially for veteran players who, even when it was released, often beat this encounter on their first or second pull. It's basically just a series of stacks and spreads mixed with timed AoE dodges and some minor healing and mitigation checks. But for a new player who's never done any harder content in an MMO, that approachability helps a lot more than it hurts. And so it gets an honorable mention, because it does a lot of things right that an introduction should do, I just think that there are fights that do them better while also being more engaging, like my actual number 5 pick. The final Coil of Bahamut Turn 1, otherwise known as Coil Turn 10's boss, Amjigud. Much like alt Roy, this fight teaches players about a bunch of mechanics that they will see used over and over again in other raids. Spread mechanics like Heat Lightning, Stack mechanics, mid-fight DPS checks, there's a lot here that a new player will learn about and be able to take into other fights. But what sets it apart from alt Reut is the presentation of these mechanics. How, as the fight goes on, they get mixed and matched, building on what you've done up to then. The Heat Lightning start to determine who is available to go into the Wild Charge, sometimes even forcing tank swaps. Then, a new stack starts happening, where it too is affected by either Heat Lightning, or it will decide who can go into the Wild Charge, and you need a priority system to handle them together. All of this while the outer edge of the arena slowly closes in on you, bit by bit. Those extra factors just make it feel that much more satisfying to clear, while especially today where power creep has made players much stronger even when approaching the fight at the intended gear levels, the fight remains very approachable. All while nailing the tutorial aspect, and in my view being more engaging than alt Roy to land it on the list proper. However, when it comes to the engagement factor, nothing can top my next pick. Number 4. Alexander Midas, The Fist of the Sun, Savage. Ratfink's Twinkledinks is one of the most fun encounters I've ever done in an MMO. If you want a memorable introduction to raiding, I don't think you're going to top a fight against a goblin that drinks a growth potion to become massive as soon as you pull him, and will do so again at different times throughout the battle, where mechanics force players to turn into birds and gorillas with these colorful puddles on the ground while you dodge these Bomberman bombs, turn invisible to make ads stop attacking you, and make sure you continue to expose yourself to these chemicals every so often so that the withdrawal doesn't take you out. You are fighting a mad scientist, and you know it from the second you pull the boss. And not only does the fight teach you about commonly used mechanics, people getting a marker that tells them they need to get away from everything, 
tank busters, stacks, raid wides, but it shows them to you in new and different ways, teaching you that sometimes there are tells besides cast bars for things. There was a time where I would have put this fight at the top of this list, but as time has gone by and the way the 14 devs design raids has changed, other fights have been released that I think just do a better job of introducing players to FF14 raiding as a whole. But still, it is a very good introduction, and a fight I would highly recommend trying if you haven't. Now, my next two picks are going to be more controversial choices to some in the community, but I really do believe they both belong on this list and in these positions. At number 3, we have Eric Donios from Pandemonium's First Circle, which is a very well put together encounter. As a more modern fight, he teaches new players about more modern standard mechanics. Yes, we still have stacks and spreads and tank busters and mechanics where you need to read the animation to understand what's about to happen, but we also get in-out and left-right dodges and mechanics where players need to soak in AoE, mechanics which have become very standard in more recent raid encounters. In addition to this, if you're doing the fight blind, there's more puzzle solving than the previous fights I've mentioned, where all of the mechanics were fairly straightforward. Figuring out how intemperance works, where some patterns can have everyone keep to one spot while others force an adjustment. Understanding how the chains work and how to position people so nothing overlaps and no one baits multiple things. It's nothing super complicated, but it's a good introduction to the kinds of problems FF14 raids will be presenting to you. And on top of all this, it still manages to nail its aesthetics. You understand at every moment that the person you're fighting has been trained to bind his targets in these ethereal chains. The arena changes from phase to phase in a way that's visually very striking and that puts that chain motif to use and the music really does make you feel like you're in some kind of supernatural prison. The only weakness I would say the fight really has is that it more or less repeats after Fourfold Shackles, but even that isn't a huge negative, as it helps to make the prog feel quick, as once you've gotten past that, you understand everything that the encounter is going to throw at you, it's just a matter of executing it with the slight variations that are added on. So at this point, We've established what makes a good intro fight. Teaching players basic mechanics and concepts that they'll see in upcoming future encounters, presenting those ideas in an engaging and fun package, and keeping the challenge levels reasonable but still present are what I would consider to be the mandatory pieces to doing an intro boss well. And while our next fight continues to have these elements, you might be wondering what puts it above almost everything else, and why did I feel it would be a controversial choice? Well, I think the second best intro boss in Final Fantasy XIV is Eden Prime from Eden's Gate Resurrection. Now, those who have done this fight probably know where I'm going with this, but for those who don't, this fight has a long cutscene around the midway point of the encounter and that's something that a lot of people weren't huge fans of. For me though, I think it adds to the spectacle and makes the fight more memorable while also giving players a moment to mentally reset and prepare for the latter half of the encounter. But there's something else this boss does that makes it truly special, that earns it this spot ahead of every other intro boss except one, and that is this buff. Paradise Regained. Shortly after the cutscene, Eden Prime returns to the arena and places this buff on himself. What it does is change the effects of most of his abilities to basically do the opposite of what they did before. The tank buster lines are now inverse wild charges where the tank needs to be at the back behind a group stack. The spread AoEs that dropped puddles are now pair stacks. The passable debuffs now increase damage taken and reduce healing output, so you have to put them on a DPS rather than the tank. Even Delta Attack gets all its effects inverted while this buff is active. Ultimately, what this does is present 
a whole new set of mechanics to the players, but present them in a way where once they understand the gimmick of this buff, they can easily intuit how to solve and perform them based on the info they already have. That gives the players a lightbulb moment they won't soon forget, and while making the overall prog experience approachable, does so in a way that doesn't feel like it cheapens the experience. It's a creative solution, probably the most creative solution they've come up with to this question, and if it weren't for the length of the cutscene, this would probably sit as my favorite intro boss. However, there is one other fight that had a creative approach to this problem, where its flaws were a lot less divisive to the community. You all knew this was coming. The best intro boss is Chaos from 09S. Of course it is. Everyone loves this fight, and for good reason. This fight doesn't just train you on the most basic concepts you'll see in raids. The stacks, spreads, in, out, front, back, left, right, reading animations, no. While it does have all of that, it takes it to the next level. It gives you mechanics based on how your character is facing. It asks you to get hit by normally lethal damage, to heal players to full in a short time frame, knockbacks, proximity damage. This isn't just an introduction, it's an FF14 mechanics boot camp, and it is presented to you brilliantly. The gimmick of this encounter is that there are four different elemental phases, each with their own ideas to teach you, their own alterations to the arena you're standing in. Each of these phases feels very distinct. But they're not just given to you in the exact same order every attempt. They come in sets of two. Fire into wind, and water into earth. And after the first 30 seconds or so of the fight, it's random which of these pairs you'll see. This means, in the first chunk of the fight, you have the ability to progress through and learn the mechanics of every elemental phase. The majority of the fight can be learned very early on, making the progression experience smoother. After the first pair, you get the add phase, which gives you a new puzzle to solve. Each player is given two debuffs, DPS getting debuffs from the fire and earth phases, and support getting debuffs from the water and wind phases all of which need to be resolved while killing the Dark Crystal building strength in the middle of the room. And with this setup, this ad phase avoids a problem encountered in the Endwalker intro bosses that didn't make this list, where they have a more difficult mechanic in the middle that uses none of your prior knowledge, and instead just forces you to learn a whole new dance that's more complicated than possibly the entire rest of the fight. Where Chaos succeeds here, is that it instead builds on the knowledge that players have gained to craft a puzzle they can feel properly equipped to solve. And after that, you're given the remaining elemental phase pair that you didn't see at the start of the encounter, which, if you're getting this far consistently, you have a complete understanding of. After that, all that's left is the enrage phase, which, once again, gives you a debuff of each element. But this time, there's no puzzle. There's no pretense, it's just raid wides, debuffs, and the race to kill the boss before he kills you. Now, the enrage phase does have one flaw, in that the wind debuffs don't have a knockback to resolve them with, and the damage from not resolving them, especially at launch, was very likely to kill certain players outright. But such a minor flaw in what is otherwise a brilliant fight is not enough to knock it off the top spot. This one's honestly a masterpiece, and if you haven't experienced it, I highly recommend doing so. Especially, min-eye level, no echo. Give yourself a taste of the best. A good introduction gets players interested in the content. It teaches them the basic skills they'll need moving forward without overloading them in a way that will scare them off. Final Fantasy XIV has a lot of these. Plenty that just barely didn't make it onto this list. But in my view, a great introduction goes the next step, and gives us a creative solution to making that very first prog experience approachable for new players, and presents itself in a way that is truly memorable. Of these, we have two by my count, but I know the dev team is capable of giving us more, 
and I'm looking forward to what we see in just a couple of weeks here with the Arcadian Savage to see what they have in store for us next. I'm Toka, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this discussion, throw me a sub as I'd love to dive deeper into more topics like this. Also feel free to come check out my streams at twitch.tv slash tokaxiv, and with that, I'll see y'all later.